ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for yet another one of our weekly uh, Modzu Google Hangouts. Uh, this week we've got an extra special guest lined up. Uh, if you were watching last week, you'll know we've got Patrick Norton live on the line. Hey, Pat. Hey, hey, it's great to be here and be. I'm, I'm like, what? Special? Who's a special guest? I'm excited. <laughs> there you go. It's me. Oh, <laughs> Glad to be here, though, guys. Well, it's always good to have you. Uh, we got, of course, Bill. Hey, everybody. Good to see you again. Chris, our modding Modskito. Thanks for tuning in again. And some of our non regulars, we've got Graham, who's also known as Dumpster Tech on the Mod Zoo. Hey there. Greg. You're missing your lower third, dude. <laughs> PC pack crap. Right, yeah, it's been quiet, all right. <laughs> and we have Stu, our Nubasaurus. Uh, what's up, everybody? So, Bill, what have we got lined up this week? Well, today, and after several months of uh, dealing with Patrick's busy schedule, because he is a family man, first and foremost, we've been at the mercy, and uh, he finally could join us today, which is awesome. Um, this is actually a topic we, we touched on before in a past Hangout, and we had done this Hangout where the topic was modding materials, and then it went into this area that was really exciting, exotic materials. Uh, one of our guests that was with us, uh, Josh Sniffin from NFC Systems, had showed us purple heart wood that he used in one of his previous projects. And we're like, this is so cool. And he showed us all the benefits of it. And we thought, well, you know what? We should do a future hangout where we talk more about exotic types of building materials. Now, here's the thing. Exotic. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, mosquito, when you hear exotic, what do you think right away? Exotic woods. Exotic but I might woods. be a little bit tainted. Okay, like like a bamboo. Exotic cows. Oh yeah, that's because Pat's going to be heading to somewhere real nice. I bet for vacation. Um, how about you, Greg? Exotic materials. What what comes to mind? Titanium, things like Titanium. that. Uh, yeah. For me, for me, obviously acrylic, but gold plating. Gold platinum. plating. Platinum. Yeah, and uh, Pat, Greg is also a huge car guy, so first thing I thought, titanium, you know, titanium parts and, and stuff like that in race cars, and and uh, how about you, Stu, exotic materials, what comes to mind? Uh, expensive things. Expensive, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know, like, well, uh... I definitely am with with moss in the wood realm. So you got purple heart, like ebony, um, mahogany too. You could call exotic, but not as much. Um, Bulbinga is a good one. Exotic woods, but then metal wise, like tit titanium. I think even car carbon fiber. Yeah, is carbon fiber. sort of exotic, like the yeah. the real the real carbon fiber stuff. So yeah. 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 Now here's the thing: we had presented uh, Patrick with this topic early on via email. And he brought up some good points. Exotic doesn't have to be, you know, from faraway lands. It could be as close as the dumpster nearby, right, Pat? <laughs> yes. Yes, it can. Um, no, I was laughing because, like, one, you guys are all listing amazing stuff. Um, and I was laughing because, like, one of the things they talked about was, like, oh, you know, nobody's, you know, nobody's doing, it seems like nobody's either doing, man, there's a sentence in my head that, that is desperate to come out. But, like, thinking about, you know, what you know designs or what people can do with wood um, some of the there's a, a couple of amazing wood importers around here the kind of places where you get like a four by four inch block of something and they sell it by weight and the pound uh, and you know like you know uh, zebra wood and stuff but um, you know I always am surprised people don't do more with plating people don't do more with exotic metals people don't do more stuff that looks like it's been fabricated out of metal um, carbon fiber dead on like people are like you know I put it like don't put layering carbon fiber. It's amazing what you do when you start molding carbon fiber. Um, it's the first time I saw somebody molding carbon fiber uh, was almost 20 years ago, and they were doing uh, ice, like like basically like windsurfing boards for iced lakes. And the uh -huh. guy had uh, it was like you know like, you ever look at a mold and you're like that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like this guy had hand uh, 
you know, hand carved um, this incredible mold, and then they would hand Cali, we would put down layers of carbon fiber and epoxy, and then, you know, you wait for it to set and pop it out, but, um, you know, I tend to recycle a lot of stuff, yeah, the, uh, uh, in part because there's just, there's some incredible sort of industrial recycling places in the Bay Area, and it always amazes me, like, what gets thrown out and what's reusable, not in the kind of, like, you know, I'm gonna be steampunky, and I'm gonna put <laughs> fake dials on everything, because steampunk, but, just the fact that, you know, you'll look at something and it'll be this incredible, like, you know, somebody in 1950 was like, well, I need an enclosure for a couple of switches to go on the side of this, you know, machine. And I'm going to build it as if it has to go through World War III and my grandchildren need to be able to use it without a manual, um, you know, and it's just there to play around with. And then I feel bad about cutting holes in it, but I think it's <laughs> people. Yeah, um, right. Like the bake light stuff from the old uh, vintage radios, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a sin to uh, modify something like that that's got, like, historic, you know, collectible, you know, collectability, and you piss off a bunch of, um, you know, old radio collectors and stuff like that. I try not to, to, if it's something that's, like, it has value to a lot of people, I mean, I I hate, um, I get why people watch them on YouTube, but I find it so infuriating when somebody's like, you know, I'm going to put the newest whatever in a blender. Because it always it's like that's a really nice phone, and and people are waiting for that phone, or you know, or it's even like you know, you know, I'll 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 build a five hundred dollar PC, I'll with a couple of upgrades, I'll make it last four years, and then I'll still try to figure out somebody who needs a computer yeah. or, or yeah. something, uh, just because you know, uh, why waste something that's useful? Um, right, right. You like more of like yeah. just keep it green and recyclable. Um, and that's funny. Is uh, it uh, reminds me of what Greg, ju- I mean, uh, Graham just created the other night. Graham, what did you make the other night? Actually, I made it last night. Um, <laughs> um, knowing knowing that we were doing the exotic materials, uh, I, uh, I I decided, and it's actually running in the background behind me. Um, it's running Cody. This is a pizza box PC. Um, a buddy of mine. Uh, talked about uh, the fact that he built a server one uh, a while back, and he, he just got out of the military. He built a server out of a pizza box, and I joked when we, when we came up with this hangout that we should do this, and and uh, I, I joked about this being exotic, and, 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 and I was like, you know, I'm going to build one for the hangout. So, um, so yeah, it's running Cody right now. In fact, actually, it's uh, the video that's playing on it right now is some, uh, some it's kind of a teaser, actually, for an upcoming uh, video that we've got, or video review. Um, some footage from that. The and question is, Graham, did it take longer to eat the pizza or make the PC out of the box? Uh, longer <laughs> to make the PC. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, because one of the things when you're dealing with cardboard is obviously stru- uh, structure uh, and, and, and structural rigidity when, when, you're, when you're trying to mount components inside it so they're not moving around. Um, so this became kind of not just the pizza box PC, but the whatever was in arm's reach PC. To, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, There's no paracord, man. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, we ended up actually using, ironically enough, if, and I can, I'm gonna send, uh, screen share the picture here. Um, it, this is this is the inside of the PC. It's um, you can see there's actually a Visa gift card on the back I/O that's holding because we had to cut obviously the I/O out. So we cut the Visa you know, and then glued it this plastic you know Visa. It's like a credit card. To the, so that way it would maintain the structure of the cardboard, so that way it wasn't collapsing. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I do like the power and reset buttons, buddy. Yeah, but. and this is just me being a brat, because I wanted to, to, to really make this thing look silly, so I yeah, I, I used uh, IBC root beer um, and cream soda bottle caps. <laughs> um, so yeah, just kind of just some of the pictures I've got. This is a uh, actually the the I/O panel is is uh, recycled from a Bit Phoenix Prodigy that it uh, that I'd broken. Um, so I recycled, you know, recycled that in there, taped it in. So yeah, cool. So yeah, it was kind of kind of a fun build to do last night, you know, and you just be yeah. it. So Pat, have you ever done anything <laughs> like that? Uh, we did a uh, we did a um, like you know four hundred dollar PC build on uh, on Die Try and and we uh, we were doing anything we could to hit the budget because at the point we wanted to be able to play games on it we needed a, a there was this like Pentium class you know uh, 
you know, it was, it was like a 2014 Pentium. They called it a Pentium, but it was a 2014 processor. But it was like a dual core processor, and, and I was like, we 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 can't. We either have to scrounge a case or like. Uh, and somebody, we just found out somebody threw out our stash of cases in the back of the studio. <laughs> Jeez. Oh no! So we uh, we cut off a piece of uh, like you know it was like 18 inches by like a you know 18 inch piece of of half inch by six inch uh, fur that we don't know where it came from or why it was there and uh, drilled some holes in it and used paracord to lash the motherboard and the various components, the power supply, the motherboard, and the uh, the GPU in place on the motherboard. And this then is ringing a bell. On the wall. I, I've seen that video and, and I loved it, Pat. I, I really did. That is there a the picture of this? Uh, uh, Moss, could you grab a picture online maybe? Was there a name of the project, Pat, that we could find? Uh, screw the Xbox One and the PS4. We're building a $400 gaming PC. Um, Good Lord, that's a title. Yeah, you know, is. sometimes you just move for it on YouTube and it works. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> uh, yeah, three hundred eighty dollars. I think there's. Well, it was from uh, Die Trying, DIY Trying, was yeah. the name of the series. Um, people are still angry about that build. <laughs> um, I loved it. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> You know, I think that's another thing I like about Pat, though, is, like, you know, he'll probably be working on something. Like, you know what? If they don't like it, so what? This is what we're doing, you know? Wouldn't you well, say? Th well, there's a, you know, you try not to be a jerk. Um, and then, no. but at some level, you know, uh, at some level, I mean, it's like, you know, there were people, there were people who got it, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to say something really terrible here, uh, uh, given the show and the audience. At some level, you know, your enclosure is the least important part of making a PC function, unless you're in a really <laughs> dusty environment. <laughs> the flip side of that is there's so many bad PC enclosures. Like, you know, I'm, I'm looking behind you, and, and I, I always think of it as the Viper um, because of the shape, the one behind it's over your shoulder right here. Uh, because, like, I yeah, I marvel over at that case all the time. You like, like that one, Pat? Gorgeous. It's amazing. It wouldn't well, fit on my desk. Something. It doesn't but have I love a home. It. <laughs> and maybe we can... That touches on something I wanted to bring up later, um, is I want us to brainstorm an idea for a tech theme, a tech thing theme PC build or case mod. It has to have bootstraps on it. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, you know, but it's amazing. I, people, people either got it because I've I've done builds since then, and I'm like, look, you know, scrounge a case, recycle a case, pick up, you know, because there's like there's 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 pieces for PC. Like I laugh, a friend of mine's like, well, where where do I get a you know the thing that holds the cards in place? And I'm like, the next time you're walking down the street and somebody's dumped it, because there's this recycling system here in Northern California where you dump stuff you don't want on the corner because you can't be bothered to take it to proper recycling. Uh, not that it makes me bitter or angry, but I did catch a contractor once dumping toilets at the side of my house in San Francisco. Whoa. It was an awesome conversation. No, it was cool. I was like, oh, so you're the guy that's been doing that. He's like, I've never done this before. I'm like, well, this is the third time a toilet showed up on the side of my house. You should you should take that. He's like, or what? I'm like, or I just took a picture of the contractor number on the side of your house or the side of your truck, and I'm calling the cops. He's like, what would you do? I'm like, I don't know, but I'm sure it's going to suck a lot for you. <laughs> 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 Stop dumping stuff here, and he's like, "I'm sorry." Um, and he never dumped any. And the toilets start showing up in my house every three months, which I was really excited about. Um, you know, it was like a nice Jersey moment with this this contractor. He's like, "What are you gonna do about it?" I'm like, "Call the cops with your freaking contractor license number and raise hell." Um, Did you, you know. build a toilet PC case build? I was thinking the same thing. You know, it's the nice thing about that is we do it with gaming and a little like you know portable monitor. <laughs> you turn around and sit backwards on a toilet. You can put a laptop on top of it and use it as a desk. From, is this coming from experience? <laughs> no, not at all. I've never ever done things like that. I'm a sophisticated adult of style and taste. Um, uh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I can honestly say I've worked with a computer in just about every horrible place you can work with a computer, um, you know, and don't try to prop a laptop on the propane tanks on the back of a forklift. <laughs> Is porcelain considered an exotic material? Yes, yeah. Yeah. for a PC well, case. Yeah, and then um, uh, 
one of our staffers, Trev, just said, well, you've got water cooling tank for the toilet PC. It's built in already. <laughs> built in reservoir. You got the reservoir. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man. That would probably work as well as a car radiator would, just from the sheer mass of volume. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever happened well, to that radiator? It is, uh, it is sitting on a shelf um, next to my desk at the Hack 5 warehouse, because it was still the best. Uh, so for, for we did a water cooling thing a long time ago, and uh, we ended up using, for the radiator, uh, we ended up using, I found a... Uh, off of a V6 Dodge minivan, a car radiator that was just narrower and shorter than the case mm. we were building with, mm -hmm. um, and then cobbled together the plumbing to attach that. So we had like an electric fan that was the size of the radiator, and if you ran it at five volts, uh, it kept everything at ambient temperature, but it was fairly quiet. If you ran it on 12 volts, uh, it sounded like you were taking off in a helicopter. We ran it at five volts off the power supply, uh, off one of the power off off the power supply output, um, and uh, you know it held like three gallons of water. Um, <laughs> so the loudest thing on that was the pump, which was pretty awesome for us. Um, and we, you know, we, we couldn't we there was so much water we just couldn't heat it up. Um, so I'm thinking that the toilet tank PC would be awesome for uh, liquid cooling. <laughs> yeah. oh, we've, got, uh, we've got some questions already. This one is from um, our staffer, Jesse, and he wonders uh, if you know what Yoshi's been up to, and he's not referring to the Nintendo Yoshi. Do you know what he's been up to at all? Yeah, Yoshi, um, Yoshi moved down to L.A., and he started working for... Um, Basically, a 3D modeling facility, like oh, making, yeah, you know, that. when they were like, you know, hey, we need, you know, this car, and they, he started out working there, and then was doing a lot of uh, super high-end uh, laser mapping. So if you needed to get like, you know, 4,000 points of measurement on the exterior of, I don't know, a 1967 Bel Air or something, they would have a facility where they would go in and they would measure it uh, and create the 3D model for it for Hollywood Studios. Hmm. So wow. Last I checked, he was down there uh, doing stuff like that. Um, That's cool. Uh, speaking of cars, I've got a question. I want to see if we can stump our uh, screensavers fans here, Drew and Graham. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys, screensavers, in the intro of the, sh intro of the show, there was two different cars that Leo and Pat were driving. Can you name the model and year of those two cars? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you got me. You got uh, me. I'm, 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 I'm like a car guy. guy and, and... Wow, like, thanks. That's the only one I could stump them on, though. <laughs> and, 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 and Wikipedia to the rescue. Um, no. <laughs> no, I tried looking. I tried to, you know, do a little fact checking, and I couldn't find anything. Pat, what were those two cars? Uh, it was uh, one of our producers, uh, Mustang. I want to say a '71 Mach 1 um, that he restored at his parents' place out in Grass Valley. I probably have the year wrong on that. Uh, and the other one was an Oldsmobile 442 convertible. And I don't remember the exact year on that. I'd have to look around at pictures. Um, that was one of the funnest cars I've oh, ever driven. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I always thought guy, it was yours. <laughs> oh God, no! Uh, I wish. By the by, the time by that point, those were already selling for stupid amounts of money. Yeah. Um, you know, Meachams and all that stuff had, had started the big car auctions. So I think the guy said the guy was really funny. He was like, "There's there's people who have basically Rolodexes because they're always old enough to have a Rolodex, and not a computer program, and it's just filled with like car manufacturers, and then they have index cards. So if they're like, you know, oh, you're looking for a 19, you know, 27 Stutz Bearcat that's in running condition." Let me make, and they and and they have this whole system where they you know people like rent them and their special insurance. But like when you look at a at, at some kind of a, a movie or television show, like basically all those cars in the background are owned by people who bring them in yes. for the, for the rentals. It's the craziest thing you've ever yeah. seen. At least I've ever seen. But this guy was an old 442 convertible, and uh, he'd souped it up lightly. Um, didn't want to talk too much about what he'd done to the engine, but he said, "Look, there's a." There's a, uh, it was an automatic with a stall speed of almost 3,000 RPM. And he's like, if you want to light it up, just get it up to around 2,700, you know, hold the brake, get it up to about 2,700 and just drop it. And I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, go for it. I'm like, are you sure? Like, I want you to say that to the camera. He's like, absolutely. Just don't bend it. 
you know, so I ran it up to 3,000 RPM. Leo's eyes got the size of the <laughs> place, he realizes, and launched it. Both wheels broke loose, you know, light, tiny bit of puff, started turning to the side, turned into it, and off we went. And Leo was like, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> he just saw his uh, entire bank account going out to cover... Uh, you know, car da damages to the car. Now, you know what? There's no. a third car, too. The the um the red Challenger, Dodge Challenger you guys drove as well. I don't even remember that one. That was a long yeah. time ago. Was that the Are one you we sure were that was, uh, I think that was Kate Patella. That huh? might have been. Might have been. That might have been the, I think, uh, I think it was, I remember the Mach 1, which was the first one, the silver one. Um, man, I can't even remember that one. We did two intros. It was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like 99, wasn't it? Pretty much. Yeah. But... I was going to say, I know the new show you guys were at Segways. <laughs> <laughs> they have a collection of Segways up at the Twitch studio, um, or at least two or three that are that are living around there. Um, those are like, you know, those are like mopeds. Like, they're really fun to ride. You just never want people to see you on one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've got moped gangs here in Minnesota. And I live by uh, near this parkway. And I'll hear this. It's like, oh, it's the moped gang coming. There'll be like 30 of them. These they, two cycles. There was a point where they were trying to, there was the, the mopeds. There, there was kind of this hipster moment for mopeds where they were like, you know, before the beards and the vintage um, uh, uh, Pendleton wool clothing, but yeah. after something else, uh, where kids were trying to write, they, they, they were buying these like 78 Poosh, like all yeah, these Yeah, the Poosh, man. Yeah. Uh, or or uh, Puck. What are they called? Yeah, that's the one. I, yeah, I, Puck. I, I yeah. mispronounce words all the time. The uh, But like, you know, you would see these like, crazy 70s mopeds, but the reason you would see them so closely is because they were trying to ride them up the hills of San Francisco, <laughs> and they'd be flat out and doing like 14 miles an hour up the side of this hill, and you'd just be like, yeah, man, yeah. you be you. <laughs> Could you do that over on the side of the road? Because you're blocking up traffic for several uh, I love. I had a, um, a 1980 Garelli moped, and it was 50 cc's. And the funny thing is about mopeds, it, later on they got bigger and heavier with more features, but they still retain the pedals. And I'll never forget when I ran out of gas and I literally tried to ride that thing on a hot summer day with the pedals. How stupid. It was just like, this is just pointless. <laughs> yeah, they pretty much are there to start it and for the occasion, exactly. 10 feet at the top of a hill. But... That whole, you know, that whole mopeding with the pedals from place to place is a myth, man. Have you seen, have you seen what people are doing with electric bikes these days? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, has one. I was gonna say, it, my uh, the guy right next to my studio here has, uh, they're made in Great Britain. They're, they're ice incumbent bikes, the three wheel trikes. They're called ice trikes. Oh my goodness. And he just picked up um, a hub, a wheel. It's the motors inside the rear hub. Exactly. And he can do, um, what did he say, he can do on a charge, it's a 1,000 watt battery, he can do 60 miles on a one charge, and he can go 35 miles per hour with this thing. Crazy. For 250 bucks it was the kit. That's awesome. So you were going to say, you, you know, somebody well, else? Doing yeah, that? a friend of mine bought one, and it's, it's amazing because, you know, he just, he, you know, it does whatever. Like I think the arbitrary speed limit for stuff that doesn't have to go through uh, dot is like 25 miles an hour. Um, you know, and then of course there's always like, okay, if you cross this or change this or move this resistor, um, you know, you can get around that. But I was amazed at this bicycle because, you know, he was pedaling along with us, and all of a sudden he's like, I'm done, and you know, just tear, does a horizon job on us. And I'm like, what just happened? And, and somebody's like, oh, there's a motor on that. I hadn't seen the big hub in the back. And, of course, when we got back to, to where we were all meeting up, I was looking at the hub, and I was amazed at how small the lithium-ion batteries were oh, yeah. uh, for the speed and the range on that. Um, but uh, it's pretty, I don't know, it's it's pretty crazy to look at that. But the uh, the uh, not as crazy as the toilet PC with the water tank for the coolant, but... The, uh, I, I, I predict a future episode, uh, a project log on tech thing with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> we can try to help you too. If you need any help, need any stuff, we'll help you out. Oh, goodness. 
I'm just trying to figure out where to put the motherboard. <laughs> what is what is the craziest mod or, or build you've ever done? What I've ever done? Um, yeah. Man, when we when we were working on some of the you know, is it, and they seem so pedestrian now. But when we were working on the Ultimate Gaming Machines uh, back at Tech TV. Those were always really crazy because they just cut us a giant check. And oh. we just bought the best of everything, um, oh, you know, and then God. did a giveaway with them. Yeah, I mean, the first one we built was like $8,000 oh, um, you know, with a magnificent, like, 19-inch CRT monitor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, at this point, uh, you know, I, I just built um, not too long ago, uh, and it's not a particular mod, but I, I built uh, one of the first S4 minis from not from Concentrate, from NFC. You mentioned Josh earlier. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm so in love with that case. Oh, um, that's great that you guys hooked up, man. Yeah, no, I, I was I was I was getting ready to do a, like a mini ITX build, and I was like la 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 la, and I saw the the photos on his website, and I was just like. I want the precious and uh, <laughs> contact him and got a hold of him and got one and and that's uh um you know it was it was amazing to 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 look at how he'd rubixed you know uh or or tetris together yeah. you know everything inside of that and yeah. part of what's so awesome about it is is that it um you know he also has all the parts that actually work um <laughs> Yeah. You know, I was I was really nervous about like a 16x PCI Express ribbon cable. Like this is either going to be awesome or a giant sack of fail. You know, exactly. and then found the source of them that worked, and yeah. uh, and then I realized like, oh my goodness, it worked. And it's like if and if I can figure out a, a better way to configure a power supply, it suddenly opens up. Uh, mm -hmm. You know all these opportunities. Um, like Pico PSUs are cool, but you're yeah. looking at like 192 watts. Um, yeah. You know, I did the HD Plex. That's like 250 watts. So now I'm, I'm looking at all of these. Uh, you know, I'm looking at all these new, like you know, the the AMD Radeon 470 and 480, the the GTX 1070, um, where they keep up in the up in the uh, performance and and reducing the power consumption. And there's just some incredible options out there. And now I'm like, oh wow. Maybe I can get a, a more powerful. You know, I'm not going to get to 4K gaming, but I can probably do uh, you know 2560 by 1440 really comfortably on and, and still have it fit inside the thermal envelope of this case. So um, yeah, there's a that that falls into uh, another uh, viewer question. Uh, this is nobody's LP, and he asks just picked. Boy, he says just picked up a GTX 980 4 gigabyte new for 250 bucks. Still have a week to return it. Worth keeping, or should I go for the 1060 slash 1070? I have a G-Sync monitor, so sticking with NVIDIA most likely. Any input on that, Pat? Or anybody else? What card was that? I think he said GTX 980. Yeah, he's got a GTX 980. Man, uh, he paid. If he did, he pay. He said he paid 220 for Two, it. 250 for it, which is what they're going for. Yeah. Well, it's. Man, um, that's not a bad deal. I mean, part of me, part of me is like 220 for a GTX 980. That's a good deal. Uh, I'm looking at Newegg right now, and I'm looking at a bunch that are selling for like 350 to 500 dollars. And I'm trying to figure out what awesome sauce has been poured on them. Okay, so they're starting at 380. 220 for a 980 doesn't bother me. If he'd spent 380, I'd be like, just. Just yeah. wait for the supply. Right. To, you know, I I really want to tell him like enjoy the car, and I'm also or enjoy the car, and I'm also like, man, just return it and wait for the prices to come down on the 1070 and the 480, because the performance on the 1070 and the 1080 are just ridiculous for the money, um, but they're also impossible to buy right now. Yes, they are. Um, we uh. Uh, well, it's fun talking to Pat, but we wanted to have some of our guys, we gave them an assignment to share one of these exotic materials for modding or building, and we're going to start with Moss because he actually had to relocate his camera for this today. Nice. <laughs> I don't know if I was quite ready for that, but sure. <laughs> uh, okay, hang on just a second. Uh, you might want to go with somebody else. i got to reposition my... My oh, okay. I want to make it all shaky for people. Looks like looks like Greg is ready. He's ready. Sure. Greg? sure. Yes. I don't know that it's considered exotic, but it's acrylic. It's basically oh, good reflections there. 
It's all laser cut acrylic. It's gorgeous, man. On a uh, 8020 frame. And it still fits a 970. Still fits a decent sized power supply. It's uh, the SFX 500L. The 750L would fit fine too. Uh -huh. It's got a Fantex cooler. Oh, wow, these reflections are bad. Yeah, in, in acrylic, you can get um, fairly cheap, right, Greg? What's like an average sheet, and that's eighth inch thick acrylic? Yes, that's uh, the front and back are quarter inch. The a little thicker in the front and back because that's your structure. You can actually remove the front top and side panels and be able to work in it still. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even on the bottom, it's cut out for the motherboard tray and uh, the. Uh, let me see if I can get it without a reflection. Uh, the M.2 is in there, so you can have access to that. And so you can pull all these panels off and just leave the front, the back, and the rails. Mm -hmm. and, and what are the rails? How did you connect everything together? Uh, the rails are 80-20. Mm -hmm. They're cut to length, and then everything uses T-nut construction. You know. So this one is uh, basically the everything's laser cut except for the rails, whereas uh, this Cody box, this little Cody box, is actually all laser cut. Uh, even the pillars are laser cut, and so um, that's what we do for a Cody box. Mm -hmm. it, the trick is, and, and Greg worked a long time to develop ways to construct these acrylic cases because it's it's not that as easy as you would think it is to, to do it in an elegant way, right? That's super clean. And uh, he, Greg, you mentioned 8020. Explain more about what this 8020 stuff is. Well, 8020 is extruded aluminum that uh, in such a design where you can actually uh, put T-nuts in the slots, there's four slots, and you can actually put T-nuts in and screw into those. And so the rail itself is uh, extruded so that you can screw things to it. They use it for making, you can make CNC machines or what have you. Uh, I actually use stuff from Open Build. It's actually not called uh, 8020. It's uh, generally it's a V slot because they didn't want to use patented names like T slot. But so they're called T nuts still, even though it's V slot. But uh, that's basically the whole structure of it. It's held together by the front and rear panels and these rails, which are, these are anodized black, but you can get silver or what have you. You know, you could build your whole frame out of uh, 80-20 and just put panels on it. But I wanted something that was, was easier to work with. I mean, even even the cutting on the back, the the back plate, the GPU is actually held in place by the acrylic, and so yes. And you can just choose different panels. If you're going to go with a smaller power supply, you can have a smaller cutout. If you go with uh, uh, a GPU with only a single fan, like an ITX, then you're going to put one big hole. You know, it's uh, totally customizable, and I custom build them to order. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, you can check out, uh, if you, if you want to see more of Greg's stuff or contact him, his URL is the smartcomputerstore.com. Just smartcomputerstore.com. Oh, yeah. He always corrects me on that. Smartcomputerstore.com. Now, it looks like Mosquito's got his ready. Check this out. What is going on there? There. How about that? Modding materials, LCD panels. Nice. Or just or just one. Yeah, so that was that was one fun one, um, was using an LCD panel to actually make a case window so you can have video playing and you change it to be whatever whatever you kind of want, which is kind of fun. Um, so I, I think to me just exotic materials being pretty much anything you wouldn't normally think of like that because... I've seen people put monitors, like full-on monitors, in their computer before, but I've never seen them go through a monitor and break a couple to tear out the backlight and figure <laughs> out how to actually do that. But uh, yeah, so that was that was probably one of my favorite used exotic materials. Otherwise, 
I also have a bunch of pieces of wood veneer and various blocks of wood, too, but I can revisit that part later. That's really cool. And so you could also, uh, like, have your uh, system stats on that. You know, you could glance over and see that stuff if you wanted to set it up that way. Uh, I could if I had that set up. I used to have um, rain meter. I don't think I do anymore. Oh, yeah, rain meter. That's sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I used to... Uh, I guess I do. That way I could uh, set it up to have my all my various stats set up over the uh, all the different components. It's kind of hard to see. That's one problem with this is that it's always sort of a, an issue of trying to pick things in a way that you can actually see them on the screen. It's like trying to look at a monitor with stuff behind it yeah. Does it work yeah. the greatest? <laughs> That's why they don't make them that way. <laughs> the transparent monitors, you can see all the circuitry and stuff. Yeah. I've exactly. been experimenting with that for a while, and I just remember being like, "That's going to be really distracting at some level." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it looks I mean, so that's, cool in science that's, fiction. I was going to say, that's, that's kind of what, like, the augmented reality stuff is, like yeah. HoloLens and whatnot. It's basically just transparent screens that you can look through and still see everything else, so it's just slightly better implementation. <laughs> I like the idea if you get set up where there's actually shows, like, the temperature in the different zones for, like, your GPU, your CPU, your reservoir, and have, like, just over those areas in the window... You could see that. That'd be kind of cool. That is what I have set up now. You just can't really see it because I'm zoomed in, and the camera kind of sucks here. Hi. You actually you have a build log on this too, right, Chris? Oh yeah. So you could see how Chris built this thing. What's the What's the title of the project log? Uh, visible contrast. Okay. Yeah, check Google visible contrast mosquito, and you can find how he built. It built this, and uh, didn't somebody, somebody else had uh, done it at Computex, they were inspired by what you did, and you created uh, something similar. Yeah, I think it was I Buy Power. Yeah. yeah. They had a system there that... Yeah, one of the boutiques. It was a little bit bulkier, because it looked to me like theirs was mostly like mounted on the outside in a frame, whereas this is behind it. Yeah. Like, on the inside. Much more of cleaner. I don't know. There's probably <laughs> there's probably works better because they probably just bought transparent LCD panels, which you can do. You can get just pre-made transparent LCD panels, but they're like five hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. And no, I wasn't spending. Our... Yeah, I wasn't going to spend five hundred dollars on a no. transparent LCD to put in a what sixty dollar case. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay, Nubasaurus, what did you bring today? And you're a fellow. Uh, wood craftsman as well, so I'm wondering if maybe it's uh, some type of exotic wood. It's that. Drew, Drew wanted me to show PCB, which I have, so I'll do that. And I'm, Same with, I, I guess, kind of echoing what, what Pat and Moss have said of, like, not necessarily exotic, but more rare materials that you don't see, see like, in, in computer building, and I like Pat's thoughts, too, on recycling stuff, so I've got... Um, <laughs> PCB right here. Let's see, get ready for motion sickness. So, this is the case. Um, I used recycled PCBs for like the to fill in all the drive bays, and then did RGB lighting behind them, and then the uh, it's like the case floor, and then I have light up RAM with with PCBs on them. Um, and all different stuff. Like, here's the graphics card. I made a shroud for that just with circuit boards so it all kind of unifies everything. But it's so... I, it fits so well with, like, a, a PC theme, but people just don't think about using that. Um, and then my current case I'm working on is... Uh, that's all mahogany, too, with woodworking, kind of with moss. Moss can identify with that, so there's that case that I got going now. It's mahogany, and then I've got um, like uh, red slate I found for that to to kind of do some accents. And then I've got forged like bolts on there, so just all sort of different stuff that 
that people don't use. Um, it's just fun to play around with. And yeah. It's fun to, I mean, part, part of the best part for building for me is just finding weird materials that people haven't used before. Yeah. And uh, exploring that, that aspect of it. So. Nice. How about you, Drew? What did you bring to the table today for exotic materials? Yeah. This one is a throwback. Uh, I believe the original posting on it was 2002, but let me get it pulled back up here. Um, <laughs> of all of the fun things, spray foam. <laughs> Somebody just decided they wanted to cobble together some good old hardware and hold it together in the cheapest way they could. And they uh, just spray foam the ever-loving crap out of it. Oh my goodness! I wonder what they did to temperatures. Uh, they were saying actually it wasn't too too bad as long as they weren't running anything too heavy. I mean, as you can tell by the amount of video, you know, the I/O in the back here, it wasn't high high tech stuff. No. We're talking barely Pentium <laughs> one. I was gonna say with how old it is, it's probably you know just fine. It's perfectly yeah, exactly. fine. You think right there. <laughs> Yeah, and so, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's where uh, Bill and I met. Was an old uh, modding website called or a forum called pimprig.com that uh, they would go out and they would collect all of these great little links to other obscure modding mishaps, and you know post up their amusing finds on their news feed. And that was where I found that one originally. And yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I love. Yeah. That's absolutely yeah yeah. Drug is our resident um, archivist for the mods <laughs> of your. Uh, what I brought and I, I showed earlier was uh, while well, Pat was talking about carbon fiber, and this is a carbon fiber laminate sheet. Um, it's one sixteenth inch thick, and um, what's amazing about this is it sounds like metal, doesn't it? That's crazy. It's super strong and light, and the best part about it is, is it's really easy to cut. If you've ever cut carbon fiber, you wouldn't think it is. You know, if it sounds like that and it's super strong, it actually uh, it cuts super easy. Um, another thing, uh, and really, Greg was mentioning acrylic, and acrylic is great for clarity. It's really good. Um, one thing about acrylic, it's got one fault, and that is that it can it can scratch. <laughs> Jeez, <no. laughs> Break, crack easy, right? Now, here's a solution, an alternative. Let's say you need to make a new window for your PC. It's it's old, and you just want to replace the window, and you don't have power tools or you live in a dorm or apartment where you can't make noise, well, you can go to like a home improvement store and get polycarbonate. And the brand name of polycarbonate, there's like five different manufacturers of polycarbonate. The biggest one is Lexan. The nice thing about Lexan is you can cut it. I never knew that. Now, this is the same thing they use for uh, motorcycle shields or um, even riot shields or uh, bulletproof windows. Or big thing is, uh, Pat, you love rally cars. Rally cars. <laughs> Polycarbonate, buddy. Yeah. I so like it. Keep that in mind. Um, and you can bend it easily, too, if you heat it up. So, now, Thinking about that... I was going to say, that reminded me of something I wanted to ask uh, Greg. Where does he get his, his, uh, his 8020 from? What's a good place to get that where it's not, where it's not being charged at, like, you know, I, <laughs> we sell in bulk to universities, why are you calling us kind of rates. <laughs> uh, your mute's on, man. You're muted, bud. Ah, there you go. Uh, there's a company called Open Builds that actually makes vSlot, which it's kind of like open source software. They sell it to everyone at a decent price. Nice. Uh, and so they don't have to pay the licensing for the T-slot, uh, no copyrights, anything like that. So look up openbuild.com, and you can buy uh, all the stuff to build whatever you want from them. And the nice thing about uh, 
V slot is. There is actually a, a V a V groove in the top for wheels. So if you have a tapered wheel, mm -hmm. it will roll down the slot. Oh, very cool. And so it's an improvement over 8020, and it's a lot less money. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, he, he, he put a lot of research into that. I remember when he discovered that. Um, because if, you, if it's something that you want to build in retail, you obviously got to find the best, cheapest source, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that was a nice score. Um, we had a, a, another thing we wanted to bring up that, uh, uh, Graham, you had a question you posted earlier that uh, you wanted to ask Patrick, and it kind of falls into what I wanted to ask him, too. Go ahead. Oh, I mean, w not really related to the exotic materials uh, conversation. Though. I mean, we we, we kind of hinted at this earlier. The 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 death of the PC um, enthusiast, you know, with 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 the advent of you know of of mobile and more, you know, we're seeing more and more closed systems and things that are glued together. You can't get into them. Apple kind of led the way in that. You know, we're seeing you know, where we can't take it apart easily anymore. Well. Man, okay, I'm gonna work that backwards. Um, one of the things that's amazing is is you now I I know the the crew from iFixit and I've been sponsored by iFixit, so you can take that with a grain of salt. But they, it's extraordinary to watch them pull together their teardown videos for new products and then give them their repair rankings, uh, in part um, because they always figure out a way in. I mean, once in a while they go into smash and grab mode, but more often than not they do this extraordinary job of taking something that the manufacturer really doesn't want them to open ever again. Uh, and then opening it and figuring out what's inside of it. And, you know, that leads to all these extraordinary people figuring out how to add the repair of those devices. Exactly. Yeah. The wonderful iFixit bit set. Um, you know, and there's... Yeah. yeah, no, it's, 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 uh, it's amazing, right? Because they figure that out. And every time, you know, uh, you know, every time you know, we hear about a new closed system that'll never be opened or hacked or modified or be open for that. Somebody figures out how to open it or modify it or hack it or put it in a new enclosure because we're people and we can't leave well enough alone and that's what makes us really fun. Um, so, you know, the death of the PC um, I think is greatly exaggerated, you know, because uh, most of the people saying that, and, and, and you know, has growth, has sales growth slowed? Absolutely. Um, you know, and you know, there was a point there where for years and years and years, it was like 20% year over year growth, which is astronomical and crazy. And if you sell these things, it's awesome. Um, because it means you keep selling more. And for a long time, you know, if you bought a new computer every 18 months, you could feel the difference. And then at some point, you know, several years ago as cell phones become really, really powerful and there's a ton of actually useful applications on it and people start thinking in terms of, you know, Facebook as interaction rather than dealing with longer forms of communication and the fact that the vast majority of the world um, is in a situation where a phone is so much more practical than any kind of a desktop mm -hmm. or even a laptop is going to be. Um, you have this thing where it's like, you know, mobile is the future and the desktop is dead. But, you know, I've, uh, I've, I've sat next to people editing video on phones, and it's not something they do unless they have to, you know. You know, nobody wants to edit CAD. Uh, on a phone, at least not any phone I've seen. Like maybe in another five or ten years, when the processors are f on phones are more powerful, and we've got super awesome VR environments that really feel like you're in front of an eight-foot screen yeah. when you strap your glasses off, right? Because we've been hearing that promise forever. Um, you know, then you get into this point where it starts seeming like a Neil Stevenson novel, and you know you're interacting, you've strapped your goggles on, and you don't worry about somebody beating you to death with a baseball bat on the subway to take your phone and your goggles, uh, and you work in that virtual environment. But you know, it's actually the the I think a lot of it is that if you're a gamer and you're running a 1080p monitor, there hasn't been a really massive motivation to upgrade in the last two or three years. You know, if, if you've got a decent processor, you know, when you're looking at a 750 Ti or a 950 that sells for 160 bucks, being, you know, being able to give you just about everything you need in a 1080p environment, and you're running on a three-year-old Core i5, which is only two years or, you know, 20% slower than the, the latest Core i5, it gets really hard to be like, I'm going to buy a new desktop this year. Um, and it's been, you know, as the VR stuff comes out and some of the new GPUs, we'll probably see more you know, desktop sales, but yeah, desktop sales are slowing, but it's still millions and millions of desktops, and there's still going to be a lot of people out there, you know, I, you know, I, I work with a lot of video editors, 
they'll edit on laptops, but only at gunpoint because they have to <laughs> for a gig. You know, um, this is the last place. I mean, we, you know, we built some some like they were. Man, I'm trying to remember the the processor we were using like not Skylink, but these, these like eight core Broadbell processors. We overclocked them by 30%, and it was this incredible. Um, uh, it was this incredible um, performance boost. Like we we increased the render rate for the output by like 30 sure. percent. Um, you know, which was it, yeah. I mean, you're saying sure, but I remember when you'd like overclock 30 percent and you get like a 15 percent performance boost. So, you know, and these were rigs with like 64 gigabytes of RAM, eight core processors. You know, uh, you know, 980 Ti GPUs because you know this this was an operation where time was money, and the faster the system was the more you could get done and the more money you could make or the more things you could complete. And uh, most people don't operate in that situation. Well, you know, no, I, people... the reason I was saying sure is I I do a lot of the video editing for the Mazu. Ah, right. And so I actually, we, I was just on Friday, I brought my laptop with me to do editing. And I got to say, I noticed a made immediate difference between trying to edit on my laptop versus, yeah. you know, versus my, my hexa-core i7 system with... 32, 64 gigs of RAM. I mean, I, I, like I said, I noticed that massive difference, and I, and I, you know, I agree with that. That's why I was really saying sure, because I understand that difference from from a video editing standpoint. I mean, I think a lot of times we focus on gaming, or we, you know, that's the where the enthusiast is. But I think there are still production reasons. I mean, you bring up video editing, and that's a good point. Yeah, no, it's been. Uh, I mean, I was kind of crazy because I was doing a lot of stuff on, you know. I went from like, you know, like 17 frames per second on a dual core laptop that was fantastic for gaming but sucked for video rendering to a Core i5 laptop with 8 gigabytes of RAM and being like I can render these videos at 30 frames per second, you know, to a 6700K before it was overclocked uh, with 16 gigabytes of RAM running at 100 frames per second. Uh, you know, and all those were relatively current processors, but for most of the other stuff I do, um, except for the dual core system that didn't have hyper threading where multitasking was one of the, the great evil pains. Like, I, you know, hyper threading became really awesome when I realized just exactly how difficult it is to run six applications simultaneously on a dual core machine. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, I love this machine as long as I'm running one application at a time. But as soon yeah. as I have, like, you know, you know, like, one application and a browser and something else going on. You know, you, you switch between applications and you're watching it stutter. Um, well, it's... I think it's so funny too. Like, and, and not to go too far into the to the hardware tangent, but I mean, you you look at like disk I/O has become a huge bottleneck. And, you know, and, and yeah. I, I'm a, I'm an IT consultant by day, so like one of the things we keep you know, like I keep dealing with the slowest things I always deal with is disk performance. You know, it, mm -hmm. any OEM machine that's got a hard disk on it, it's like for the love of God, could we just put an SSD in here because everything will be better. I mean, you know, I can I can right. solve problems faster if you know I didn't have to wait for things. So. Yeah, I, SSDs are are just amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know, like I. <laughs> You know, and then NVMe, like, you know, NVMe stuffs uh, like off of YouTube ports overkill for most people. But mm -hmm. you know, knowing you have that option there to just bump that much more performance out of it makes me so happy. Although, uh, you know, putting a terabyte on an M2 slot is just an awesome concept to me, um, especially when you're looking at a, a really, you know, it's like this board's nine centimeters square, and I have everything with the GPU I want in that nine centimeter square. You know, environment. I mean, you look at Greg's mod cube with with the M2 on the on the on the underside of the ITX board. Yeah, it's yeah. it's good stuff. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So what? I mean, what does everybody else think? I mean, I mean, I assume there are everybody else desktops right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, my opinion on it is, you know, all of the smaller form factor stuff. All of that technology that's getting the tiny, you know, form factor compression, it's got to be beta tested somewhere. And I'll be happy to be that beta tester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I would largely agree in that it it's not necessarily declining so much as it is not actually still increasing. So I, I don't know if it's dying so much as that it's just flatlining. <laughs> At least that's kind of my take on it. No, I think it makes sense. Um, All right. Yeah. One last question for you, Patrick, before everyone disperses. Whatever happened to the big old box of crap? <laughs> you know, there's, 
people said they wanted it, but they never actually sent in their shipping information. So uh, most of the last big uh, box of crap ended up being recycled uh, at a place that processes electronics around here. Uh, I have since, uh, in the process of, of gutting my garage, built up an entirely new and exciting box of crap. <laughs> Um, which seems to be the horrible side of it. Well, I was I had thought I had gotten rid of all of the worst of the dead technology, uh, and then I discovered under uh, a couple cases of books, like like my wife and I are both English majors with massive pack rat issues, and when we moved into this house, we had 41 cases of books. Um, and, uh, you know, we managed to kind of cull about 10 of those cases, and we didn't have shelves for four or five cases of those books. And I finally went to get those last four or five cases of those books, and I saw this box, and I was like, WTF? And I get to the box, and I open it up, and on the top of the box is a pile of SCSI adapters and SCSI drives. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and all I could think is like, you know, there's going to be at least one three and a half inch floppy drive inside of this box. And I'm going to be torn because I'm going to be trying to figure out what was so important that I saved this, you know, this, this floppy drive that was on this floppy drive and whether or not I'm willing to try to figure out if I can cobble together an ancient enough operating system to actually be able to read what's on it. Um, but uh, so yeah, for the most part though, I've I've been trying to keep the crap to a minimum. You know, I've, I've got some like you know water cooling stuff that for whatever reason, because it was so expensive back in the day, I keep thinking I'm I'm gonna be able I'll figure out some way to adapt this to a GPU or a new processor somehow. If I can just get you know access to an end mill and I can take it down like four millimeters off these mm -hmm. two sides, and you know I'll 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 well, I'll figure out some way to mount it to the to the <laughs> to the GPU. But, you know, it's like I'm looking at a BK water block. It cost me like $180, and I'm like, no, I'm not getting rid of this until I absolutely like it, it's. I'll use it as a paperweight. I'll throw it at the cat when it poops in the garden. I'll figure out something to do with this. Um, it's expensive. Liquid cooling components. Yeah, yeah they really add up. Uh, but uh, we are actually right at the uh, two minute mark. The perfect. Hangout because we've got a professional with us, so we were our very best. <laughs> <laughs> not on not on Sundays, apparently. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just laughing because like Robert Heron and I did an AV Excel. Like, we were talking about home theater stuff, and we went on this really long tangent first about like HDR and then about headphones, and uh, all of a sudden you know it types up in the message thing. Robert's like, "Oh, we just hit 85 minutes." And I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> wow, that sounds like a good chat. Well, about 17 minutes later, we finally wrapped it up. <laughs> he managed to cut it down to about 60, but we also asked at the tail end of that one, if this is too long, please let us know. Well, in, in our chat, uh, some of the guys were like, hey, are we still going to share our modding materials with everyone? <laughs> hey, hey, Bill, Bill, I'm okay going another hour, okay? <laughs> this has been great. I know. All right. All right, Drew. Well, Patrick, I gotta say, man, it has been such a great pleasure to have you with us. And anytime you ever want to come back, you hit us up. I will take you up on that. Thank you guys so much for having me, and keep doing hey. what you guys do. It's Thank amazing. Thank you, man. So, everyone out there listening for another week, I want you to find something that's just been pissing you off because it's too damn ugly to exist anymore. Cut that son of a bitch up, paint it, do whatever. Just go mod something, would you? Have a good one, guys. <laughs> See ya.